in our previous video we mentioned that as you increase the pressure of that of a specific gas the solubility of that gas in the solution will increase so let's make sure we understand what this is saying we have a solvent that is liquid and a solute that is gas and what we're going to talk about from now on uh, in this video is only in this case when the solvent is liquid then the solute is gas and imagine a piston here you have some molecules of solute in gas form and others dissolved in the liquid what this is saying is that as we push the pre as we increase the pressure of the gas on the solution the solubility in other words the concentration of the solute in liquid will increase now we have a quantitative way to describe that and that's what the Henry's constant describes you have a direct relationship between the solubility of the gas um, and the pressure of that gas so what you actually see is if you plot solubility versus the pressure based on this you just see uh, a straight line okay the higher this Henry's constant this is the kh is the Henry's constant the more soluble it will be okay so if I'm drawing three lines here line one would be from a solvent sorry a solute that is more more soluble than solute number two and the least soluble would be solute number three what does the solubility depend on well if you look at this set of Henry's constant for different compounds notice that in water of course the, the Henry's constant depends on the type of solute but also in the type of solvent so it comes in pairs um, notice that the largest constant is not a coincidence ammonia that can form hydrogen bonds so the magnitude of Henry's constant is just the quantitative reflection of the like dissolves like principle the solutes that can interact more strongly with the solvent will have a higher Henry's constant and therefore a higher slope in this solubility versus pressure plot okay so the lowest if I'm seeing here notice that is this one helium very small dispersion forces therefore it has a very low like dissolves like principle if you like okay so that uh, so if, when when look at when looking at Henry's law it's important that you understand the principles behind this like this off like principle but also that you can apply it numerically in this case there's a sample problem it says that the partial pressure of CO2 and that's important because this pressure is not the overall pressure this pressure is the pressure of the solute so in this case we have to take into account only the partial pressure of the solute inside a bottle of a uh, bottle of a cola is four atmospheres so the pressure of the gas is four atmospheres at a specific temperature it's asked for the solubility of co2 knowing that the henry's constant of co2 in water is this number here okay so you just need to multiply it's fairly easy but i thought it was at least worth just to try mole over liter and atmosphere multiplied by four atmosphere atmosphere and atmosphere goes so this means that what you're gonna see the solubility let me see for this is gonna be 3.2 hopefully 13.2 10 to the minus 2 moles over liter okay um, of course the units of solubility are expressed in molarity uh, that is determined by the units of the Henry's constant okay there's another problem here very similar that just exemplifies that the pressure that you need to plug in in Henry's law is the partial pressure of the solute that you're trying to to investigate okay so um, let's just finish this video going through a multiple choice question um, which will cover things that we have not mentioned so so let's see in this case you have to choose just one answer identifying which one is the true one so let's see according to Henry's law the amount of gas dissolved in a solution is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid well that's exactly what Henry's law says so I'm gonna mark it as correct even though I do not exactly like the idea of the gas above the liquid it should actually be the partial pressure the partial pressure of that specific 
um, partial pressure of that specific solute. So let me put a question mark here as we go through. The solubility of a solid in a liquid always increases with increasing temperature. Well, we saw some exceptions, uh, so that's false. Okay, remember that and in that solubility over temperature, we saw some graphs like that that increased, but others that were actually decreasing. So careful, there are some exceptions. The rate of dissolution of a solid in a liquid always increases with increasing temperature. This is something that we will talk about next week, and it's how the speed of a reaction uh, is affected by temperature. This is a general principle that we did not talk about, so you were not able to answer this question. This is why we, we solve it here. The higher the temperature, always the higher the rate. Um, that's a general principle, and the idea is that if there is a barrier between reactants and products, if you give more temperature, you will give energy enough to surmount uh, or surpass that, that specific barrier. Okay, so this one is true. Now, two of these statements are true. If we give A as correct, even though I do not really like the wording because it should be the partial pressure of the solute, uh, then this one would be the correct one. Okay, so not excellent wording in this case, but if we give this one as correct, the, re the right option would be that two of these statements are true.